Welcome back to Made Simple. Today we're going to be reviewing the Anycubic Mega Pro 3D Printer and Laser Engraver. I personally have no affiliation with this company. Uh, I just want to give an honest review today of this 3D printer and laser engraver. And it's definitely going to be coming from a noob's perspective. And this printer is currently listed at $479.99. Is it worth it? Stay tuned and you'll find out. And here it is. This bad boy. All right, I'm gonna be 100% honest to start out this video and I did not know anything about 3D printers. So I can honestly give you an honest review from an amateur that knew nothing. Setup is, is pretty easy, especially since I didn't know anything. The directions are pretty clear. They tell you how to level the, um, the plate. You gotta screw um, four screws on each side. You know, it comes in two pieces. You gotta put them together. Um, and then there's a couple other screws, one for the spool where the filament is on. It comes with a couple tools like this and, and that. Um, and, and even these glasses, which are actually super useful when you're doing laser printing because it, it is bright. Anyway, setup is pretty, pretty simple, to be honest. Um, you got to level it and things, but uh, I would recommend just, just using a level, honestly. Here's a clip of the leveling machine with the, the pad. And as you'll notice, um, you put the pad on, you install it, and then it'll go from corner to corner. So you go to the first corner, um, it's kind of set up within the system, and it'll make this little faint beep noise. Um, I'm not sure if this is a defect or not, but sometimes it's really hard to here over the fan. So I just thought it was better just to use this level. You know, you can find this on Amazon for super cheap, link in the description. But overall, the instructions are super easy. Setup, setup time took me maybe like 30, 40 minutes and, and I knew nothing going into this. So let's go over the pros and cons for this 3D printer. Number one, it, it's honestly, it's, it's just simple, easy to follow touch screen. Right. The, the directions are super clear. They give you this little SD card um, and it has all the programs and all the files on it to download new designs for 3D printing or images for laser engraving and things like that. And this connects directly into the 3D printer and it's pretty convenient. Um, but that being said, that means you need a computer to really work this 3D printer. So we're gonna, that's kind of like a neutral thing. I mean, I don't really see it as a con, but we'll just put it anyways, that, that you need a computer to really operate this um, 3D printer to its capacity. Another pro to this machine is that it's it's a laser engraver and 3D printer, so two in one. Um, so we'll just put laser here, and, and you don't get that with a lot of 3D printers. It's either one, one or nothing. You know, it's not both. And, and installing the laser for the 3D printer, it's actually pretty simple. Next point I want to talk about is is low price or this entry level price of $479.99. When you're looking at other 3D printers and laser printers in one, you're not going to find a price quite like this. Um, so I think that's definitely a pro. Low price. You get a pretty you get pretty high quality laser engraving as well as 3D printing. Um, so we're going to do that. And and. I guess I don't have a huge reference for other printers, but the three prints that come with the printer um, are these two owls, and they give you about enough filament to complete these two owls, and then, you, then you're pretty much out and you can't really, so I would also recommend buying more filament. I've been using this rubber-like filament, um, link in the description below um, if you want to check that out, but it, it's cheap and it, it works pretty well. It's called TPU filament. Link in the description below if you want to check it out. Uh, it's like $20, $25 a spool. And each spool will last you a long time. 
Believe me, I've been printing things left and right and I still have more than half my spool left. And, and so that filament is kind of like this in the video. Um, this is what I was making. You know, it, it's kind of more plowable. Plowable? Plowable? Ah. It's more malleable, you know, it's it's more of a rubber kind of material um, versus this, this hard um, plastic. Um, so, I don't know, if you could see the detail on these owls, I mean, look, you can like see the engraving of the wood and the detail on this thing is just, it's, it's pretty solid. Um, and then here, here's even like a little, little, uh, Darth Vader Buddha <laughs> that I, uh, had made for my brother. <laughs> kind of cool. But I mean, you can just see the detail, like the little lightsaber right there and, and the Darth Vader face and it's, it's pretty high quality. All right, so moving on to the cons. I mean, first of all, you need a computer. Second, what I found, and this this might be user error, um, but I've tried it different ways and I've looked it up, so I'm not sure how differently I could be doing this. Um, if you do know, please leave a comment below. But um, for, for taller 3D prints, um, it doesn't work very well. And I'll show you what I mean by, by that. Um, so I, I had tried to make a handle, uh, a grip for a, a bike handlebar, right? And so I had three attempts at this. This is my, this is my first attempt. This is about, and, and then, so the handlebar goes in, goes in here. Um, but this is my first attempt and you're kind of holding it like this, right? Um, but this is my first attempt and you can see it didn't get very far. Because the taller it got, and, and this was definitely user error because it's not tall at all. Those, these owls are, are much taller. Um, but it, it did um, just make a big blob of filament because it got off track and this moved a little bit and it wasn't sturdy to the ground as it should have been. Um, and then the second attempt, I got a little, a little higher, um, but the same thing happened. And then the third attempt, I... I got much higher um, with this bike grip, but it still had that big wad of filament because I wasn't watching it closely. I kind of let it do its thing. Um, and it had a big wad of filament on top of it and it didn't get completed. So that that is definitely a, a con with taller objects. It's a little more difficult to work around. Now that may just be the design that I had incorporated into the, into the machine. And it's, that could be a flaw, a user error. That could be my fault. Um, but I've just noticed that, that that's a little difficult. Along with that, you get a little, the quality, you get a little extrusion when you start. And let me show you what I mean by that. Um, if you look at these owls, you can kind of see right here that it didn't, right here, it just didn't really it didn't really fill in that bottom as well. If you look at the other owl, there's there's no issues there. So when, when the 3D printer starts to print, it has a few errors um, that kind of cause quality issues. Um, so sometimes you gotta stop the program and rerun it, and I think that's just because it didn't have time to warm up sufficiently. Um, so I think that's a that's a system a system glitch. Um, but overall, not a huge deal. The one thing, another con about the interface I will say so specifically is the axis grid and if you look here I mean this doesn't make a lot of sense and you know you click that and it it doesn't really move a whole lot so you got to click it a lot in order for it to move Um, so then cons would also kind of what we talked about that whole idea of leveling, you know, it's, uh, it, it's a, the built-in leveling system is kind of sucky. Um, it's not really that difficult. I mean, if you, if you just buy your own level, um, it's not a huge, huge deal. Um, the other thing I will say is when you're putting filament in and taking filament out, sometimes that last piece of filament in this clip, um, you can see that that wasn't the case, that it came out, 
eventually, but sometimes that last piece of filament doesn't come out. So you got to cut it off and then run the filament through again and let it come out the other side rather than come out, if that makes sense. Um, in this case, it didn't happen, but normally that does happen. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. I don't know if that's a common 3D printer issue, um, but in this case, you can't really yank it out either. All right, so overall, I think this is a great entry level 3D printer and laser engraver. You get the two in one package and you don't get that a lot of other place uh, with a lot of other printers. Um, so big advantage there. And for the price, I, I think it's worth it. Now, I would recommend this to people using this for recreational or, you know, just for fun. But if you're trying to make a business 3D printing little knickknacks and things like that and selling them, the 3D printer is, it's pretty slow. I mean, the detail is great, but it, it takes a while to get things printed. Like the, those owls I showed earlier, those things took like four hours to make, right? So it's not a real fast process. Again, that's just something I didn't know, not being in the 3D printing space before this. Um, the laser engraver works pretty fast. It's very efficient. Um, so if you wanted to kind of start a little side hustle with that, that'd probably be the way to go. But I would recommend this for people just using this recreationally. Um, and it's a great way to get into 3D printing. Uh, I've learned so much with this printer. Um, I knew nothing before and I've really, really grown in knowledge for sure. If you're interested in buying this printer, link in the description below. You can check it out on Amazon and, and uh, kind of compare it to other models. But, but this is the Mega Pro 3D printer slash laser engraver review. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, smash that like button. I'd really appreciate that. Please and thank you.